You're being filmed, Mum. Oh, ma! <laughs> Get your harness. They always know, they always come here, and then once they see the harnesses, that's when they lose their mind. Yeah, this is Milo. Do you want to say hello to him? Yeah. <laughs> Mummy and Daddy have had a really nice lie in because you slept at Nanny's. <laughs> <laughs> You'd normally be waking us up, wouldn't you? Hey, guess what we're doing tomorrow? What? We're going camping. Oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> You're being filmed, Mum. <laughs> oh, mum, come back, mum, come back on camera. No, no, I've just got. Oh no! Do you want me to bring her around when she's ready? Yeah, I'm just gonna go to gym now, so you can bring her around for about half eleven. Just on the way to the gym now. Um, breakfast time is done with the family, and then I tend to uh, make my way to the gym and get a morning session in. So I'll be training with a mate of mine, Dave Green, who's the guru. He's the absolute guru of all the people I've trained with over the years. He's, uh, he's, he's pretty exceptional. Back in January, I was asked to do um, an ITV documentary where raising awareness for prostate and um, testicular cancer. And it meant that I would have had to be bearing all, getting my kit off and getting fully naked. So naturally, I wanted to make sure I was in pretty good shape. So I was like, Dave, for the first time in all the years I've trained, I'm gonna diet, I'm gonna train consistently, you know, four or five times a week. I'm not gonna miss a session. Let's see what sort of shape I can get. So I did that for like two months. And I think I was probably in probably the best shape I've ever been in because I was committed and you know I had Dave there holding my hand throughout. Tomorrow? No, we're not. Oh, why not? Because <laughs> we're not. <laughs> the house is chaos because we've got two children in our way all the time. And then you get home and expect tea on the table and a tidy You've house. not even done me a cup of tea. Springtime on the farm. <laughs> every cup every <laughs> that we've got, cup. every cup that we've got in the house, it's a TV shows that I've done, isn't it? We don't buy cups, we just wait for you to Family do Family fortune, <laughs> springtime on the farm. This morning, what else have we got? We had every day, we melted off. Rob Rob. Oh, <laughs> that's the day off. Doesn't anybody see Marnie? Eh? What has she got? What has Marnie got? <laughs> I met Martin about three years ago, four years ago now, and uh, he w I wasn't aware of his of his um, <laughs> of his racing stature when I first met him. I wasn't aware that he'd won Le Mans. I wasn't aware that he'd raced over in America and the Indy Lights, Indy 500. Martin Plowman, on the other hand, is going to keep it between the white lines. Behind them, look, you've got Martin Plowman in the Nissan. Great battle, this. Basically, he was a well-known, you know, high-end, well-respected racing driver, and I was completely unaware of it which was a little bit embarrassing but just what struck me at first was just what a nice lovely guy he was you know what i mean really approachable polite just likable a really nice guy and then when we started working together and racing together you know um i i just i love him to bits all right so this is the office um it's just kind of a collection of all our favourite things, you know. I don't really have a trophy room in the house. I've got an agreement since I was little that my mum gets all my helmets uh, and all the trophies and, you know, they, they have all the cool things there because they've got a bigger house. I think one of the things that means the most is probably stuff from our wedding day. Um, we got married on a golf course in St. Pete in Florida. Our original venue got cancelled at the 11th hour, so in desperation the hotel allowed us to get married on the 10th tee. 
at the Vinoy Golf Course, which is quite an exclusive course, but they shut down the course for three hours. So uh, I was really in my happy place, you know, on the happiest day of my life on a golf course. But um, yeah, I don't know if, if many people knew this about Nicole, but um, she was big into, or still is big into the pageant system, you know, like Miss America. And back in 2009, she was Miss Indiana, um, went on to compete at Miss America and, and placed in a top 12, I think. Because I don't have a lot of space in the house, I'm slowly turning this into my own man shed or dog house, so it would be. So this is my home simulator that I'm starting to piece together that I use to train before every race. It's really important to, to my racing to be ready for a race weekend. Any time you get to drive in the virtual world, get ready for the race weekend, you're just saving lots of money and getting yourself prepared for, for the race ahead. Get, get your harness. Where's your harness? Here it is. Ready, steady, go. And they're off. So since the first round, I just really just uh, had a chance to, uh, to hit the reset button. Reset! I got to do my very first London Marathon, well, my first marathon ever. Uh, you know, that was an incredible experience. Uh, I can't really put into words just how awesome it really is. I mean, racing at the Indy 500 and Le Mans are really big races, but this, for me, is, is, is really up there. So I was just really nervous about, you know, am I gonna finish? and all these people have been you know, sponsoring me on, on social media and family and friends and everybody's expecting you to do well and of course I know that I'm not going to quit, I'm not going to not finish it but I'm just worried, you know, will my body quit? Right when I was thinking, you know, I, I, you know, can I make it, can I make it to the end? I got passed by a guy wearing a paediatric cancer awareness shirt and on the back of his shirt was a picture of his son and it had his birth date and his death date and this guy was running for his son who had fortunately passed away. And the slogan read, true heroes know how to hang on for one more minute. And that just kind of like, <clears throat> you know, really hit a chord. Because here's this poor kid who was fighting for his life and hanging on for one more minute to try to survive. And yet here I am just complaining about running a race. So I thought, you know, if he can hang on for one more minute, I can hang on for one more minute running. And that thought just got me to the end. Uh, for me now, racing in British GT really feels like a new beginning. You know, I'm seeing my racing career through the eyes of a, of a beginner in Kelvin who's at the beginning of his journey. So I've kind of got that enthusiasm, that drive to learn and to succeed it all over again. You know, I really feel like a new driver. So I, I, all the small things I get to appreciate and enjoy. It's just silly things like being on the podium for the first time for Kelvin, you know, I had so much excitement just by being up there with him, spraying the champagne for the first time. You know, it's, it's something that maybe as an old driver like myself, you kind of take for granted, but seeing it through his, you know, his eyes was, was really cool.